items? Well, they taste fantastic. They have this amazing range of chemicals that give you this umami taste, this savory taste, which is sort of mimicking meat in, in many ways. And some people, it's, it's better than meat, particularly if you've got a range of different mushrooms uh, there and you've, you've slow cooked them and, or even get more taste if you dehydrate them and rehydrate them in many cases. So you actually get even more savory flavors and more chemicals. But as well as being super tasty, you know, they are, uh, you know, there's a lot of water in them. So once you've got rid of the water, they are have huge amounts of protein, 25% uh, protein, pretty good amounts of fiber as well. All these chemicals we've been talking about that have a whole variety of of these effects. Uh, they're a source of selenium. They're actually a source of vitamin D. Uh, and they sunbathe like humans. And they convert. You mentioned this before. Is yeah. this really true that if you leave them out in the sun before eating, they have more vitamin D? It is. I mean, it depends slightly on the variety, but um, some of them are really good at converting natural steroids in them to vitamin D, which is a, is a steroid. And basically, you can get, uh, you know, uh, uh, half of your vitamin D amounts from from eating uh, portions of mushrooms. Is it just a lucky byproduct for us that these mushrooms are so nutritious and have all of these chemicals we don't access else elsewhere? In some sense, I mean, it's it's also important to remember that these they haven't been busily evolving for over a billion years to give us. No, vitamin D or, 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 or to, or to, how selfish of them <laughs> um, and um, uh, although it, no, obviously it, it is irrelevant um, when we're talking about what it's like to eat them um, but they need these molecules themselves to do a lot of the basic things that they need to do so for example when we use fungal drugs like penicillin which is a very famous drug produced by a fungus um, the fungus is producing that antibiotic to defend itself from bacteria. When we use it in our lives, we are rehousing a fungal solution within our bodies uh, and our, and our um, societies. And so I think that you can think of um, a lot of the nutritional content of mushrooms as, as something similar. Um, it'll be very from, from compound to compound, of course. It's interesting. We talk a lot about diversity as we think about what you're eating. And in a sense, uh, what I'm hearing is like, Fungi aren't even plants, so I guess to make it very to think about this very simple, it's hardly surprising you're getting more diversity in the same way you're describing these these fungi carrying out tasks that plants can't do. Similarly, it's perhaps not surprising that you might have access to like these different sorts of complex chemicals from fungi that we wouldn't just get through our normal plants, or am I stretching this too far? I think there's lots of things that, that fungi can do for us chemically that plants can't. Um, because they're so chemically ingenious, because they produce all these different compounds to do all these different things. Um, and um, in fact, lots of the chemicals that you'll get by eating a plant have originally been um, concentrated or, or even made by a fungus. Um, much of the phosphorus that's in your body would have passed through a fungus on its way to the plant that, that, that fed you. And is it okay to eat them raw or should I always be cooking my mushrooms? Um, unless you're very careful, you're better off I think, uh, cooking them. Um, there are quite a few poisonous types and there are other ones that uh, just by cooking them, you, you get rid of those uh, na nasty chemicals and they're easier to eat. And it's often easier to get the nu nutrients from them if they're slightly cooked as well because they have this special um, layer, uh, chitin, um, uh, which is very hard to break down and gives it that, that structure. And also they're full of water as well. So if you're cooking them, you you actually get rid of a lot of the water and uh, you get actually more flavors that way. So that's, that's my view. I don't know whether you eat lots of raw mushrooms, but um, I think they taste better uh, cooked generally. And so that's the way I- Easier to digest, digest. The breaking down the cell walls um, for sure. Um, the times when I might eat them um, that when they haven't been cooked, firm, formally cooked with heat, is um, when they've been fermented. So if you're eating like a, a mold like koji, which is used to make soy sauce and miso, um, you haven't cooked that, but it has been transformed through a fermentation process. Cold cooking, yeah, we call cooking. that. So yes, no, I've started fermenting mushrooms. It's quite tricky, but uh, they do taste amazing. And, and how do you access this? Because most people will feel like if they go to their local grocery store or mushrooms, maybe there's like one type of mushroom or, you know, I think we start to see a few more, but still not very many. 
And I at least have been told by my mother, again, I feel like there's a long list of things that my mother told me not to do on this podcast, but one of them was not to eat random mushrooms that you find <laughs> like in the forest because you're likely to kill yourself. So how do people, I assume that the not eating random mushrooms is a good idea, Merlin? It's definitely a good idea. Because quite a lot of them eat. are genuinely poisonous. So there are some poisonous mushrooms which will give you a really uh, a bad time and potentially kill you. So um, the general uh, rule of thumb is that you never eat a mushroom that you've found unless you can positively identify it. What that means is that um, you're not just saying, well, it's not that and it's not that, so it must be this. What you're saying is, I know for a fact that it's this. Um, so that's, Which is a high bar for most people listening to this, yeah, but, just but, wandering into their local park and but, seeing a mushroom. But there are lots of ways to, to learn about you know, what mushrooms are which. It's like you can learn about what trees are which or what birds are which. And, and, and um, it's actually a really exciting thing for, for many people to do. And, so, and there's lots of great resources online um, for those who want to learn more. So I wouldn't discourage anyone for, from doing that. It's not like you need to become like the expert who knows all mushrooms overnight. I think there are thir about 300 edible types of mushroom I, uh, I read somewhere and but about 30 are cultivated and they're the ones you'd see in the shops uh, so up to 30 I guess is the is the most you're going to see in, in probably in this country and most of us aren't going to see 30 they're maybe going to see a few so that brings me back to the question at the, be at the beginning about you know dried mushrooms and uh, you know are they so good for your health or does it need to be fresh in the way that I think you talk about a lot of other plants. You say if they just sit out there for months, there's not much you know, yes. left in them. I was surprised when I was reading this that there are studies looking at the nutritional content of, of dried mushrooms. And I think a lot of it's done on shiitake mushrooms, uh, but porcini as well, which the Italians often store dried. And they are just as nutritious, just uh, they've looked at the chemical composition and uh, are super healthy and, and some people have they think they have more taste when they're rehydrated you have to add water back into them usually warm water and so these seem to be to very very healthy so it's a bit like our stories about canned tomatoes or um, beans some of these things which you might think are not healthy because they're dried you know are actually, actually still really good preserved. for you and uh, i think it shouldn't stop people eating mushrooms out of season by eating these dried ones i think that's the message um although you should find a reputable source because it's sometimes when dried mushrooms are imported um you can't tell you by looking at the fragments of dried mushrooms so you can't confirm just visually that it's the species it says it is and there are cases of um contamination or um the wrong kind of mushroom ending up in your bag of dried mushrooms so you're not really getting the variety that you want or the or the diversity they're just giving you a bunch yeah, of yeah the or, or, or ones. yeah cheaper or there are a few thrown in with the ones you want and those might not be the ones you want to be eating so um reputable source but button mushrooms are the sort of common ones in the uk and they're often the cheapest and they're cultivated in in large amounts and uh, although they look fairly dull compared to some of the exotic ones you see, I think they've still got plenty of nutrients in Is that them. right? Because they, they, they sort of look like the white bread of mushrooms, but you're telling me that actually they still... Well, it, it's I, all I feel like they can't have any nutritional value whatsoever, but you're telling me that actually I'm being unfair? I think you are, yes. Uh, certainly, I apologize you know, to the there may be better ones in my life. But you might be, you'll be generally paying more for uh, the better ones. But Berlin probably knows the differences between all of the uh, the varieties. But I still think there's no such thing as a bad mushroom. I think that's my, I'd my point. I'd agree with that. I'd agree with that. I, I personally think there are ones that taste a lot better and, and, and are more and more available, actually, like oyster mushrooms or shiitake mushrooms, um, which I would always choose over a button mushroom. Um, I would agree that there's no such thing as a bad edible mushroom. Um, but um, for those that don't like uh, or have not liked as a child, for example, button mushrooms, there may well be mushrooms out there that you do like um, because there's quite a range of flavors and textures.